Welcome to County Board Wrap Up, our look at some of the important decisions the Arlington County Board takes at its monthly meetings. I'm your host, Kara O'Donnell. Joining me today is County Board Chair Jay Fassett, as always, and joining him is Board Member Christian Dorsey today. Thank you both gentlemen for talking with us. Today's show, we're going to be talking about a contract to expand Long Bridge Park and build the Aquatics and Fitness Center. Guidance the board gave the county manager as he prepares his proposed budget for fiscal year 19 some important actions the board took to preserve affordable housing, and a lot more. Jay and Christian, thank you both for being here. Let's, it's a busy month, yep. so let's dive right in with sure. Long Bridge Park contract. This has been a long time in coming, which I think is the understatement of the year, but let's give folks a little bit of background. What has kind of has been the timeline here? Right, it's actually hard to remember when it started, <laughs> uh, and, and what you consider the start, because this is a 25, 30 acres of property, that we didn't own and came into county ownership free through the transfer of density to the other end of Crystal City. That deal with all those property owners took many, many years back in the beginning of the 80s and ended in the, the 90s essentially. Uh, and then there was a consideration of what to do with the property and um, the commitment was made to use it for open space for recreation and park purposes. Then a master plan, then a needs assessment. Uh, the needs assessment has been revisited. Um, and in fact, over the years, uh, back in the 10 years ago, eight years ago, we actually finished the first phase. We put in the playing fields. We built an esplanade. We did rain gardens and we did a playground. The master plan, however, had another phase to it. And that was a facility, aquatics fitness facility, continuation of an esplanade and more. So there's still a few things to do, but a big hurdle was, was passed this past uh, month when the board approved a contract uh, to do the next phase of the, of the park. Which That's the, the facility mm -hmm. uh, itself and the continuation of the Esplanade and about 10.5 acres of the park to be finished with, whether it's with meeting areas and rain gardens or, um, or the parking lot and other things. So big deal uh, after a ton of community engagement mm -hmm. over many years. Yeah, this has not been, this has not been a, not an Shorten easy one. the process, <laughs> shall we easy say. One. Gone back to um, the drawing board a couple times. It does come come with a sixty million dollar price tag, which mm -hmm. is significantly less than some previous incarnations mm -hmm. we've seen. But it is still a significant. How does that work into the county finances? Well, the good news here is we tried a new procurement method, the design build. So this is a cap. Um, the dollar amount is set, and then we had four teams, uh, design build teams. Uh, put forward proposals, and then we had a very rigorous process with some, some uh, a lot of staff effort, citizen effort, to make a choice, and that choice is what we approved. Um, the board really didn't get into that level of detail. Well, there's some minimum expectation set, and then a lot of negotiation to make sure this facility is functional uh, and meets the goals and needs of the community. So. It's, uh, it's going to go forward. The, they're talking about the potential of breaking ground uh, sometime in the summer of 2018. And the, the idea of this design build, that pretty much means they cannot go over that cap of that Correct. price, of what they've agreed to. Correct. No the voters in Arlington agree. voted for two bonds. There was a budget set. When the bids went out several years ago, the bids were higher than anticipated. Went back to the drawing board, sort of did a scaled down version of the facility, never added any more money. And that money is the cap. And now we will get the, the completion of the facility, but also the rest of the park within the originally approved budget. You know, traditionally, you, you know, what we've done in the past is just like uh, if you were dealing with your home, you'd work with an architect to design your dream home, and then you'd figure out what's it going to cost to build it. This approach says, you know what, we're going to work with the architect at the outset along with the contractor to say, here's what I need this house to be. Right. Here are all of my requirements. Right. What can you do for me? Right. And right. this is what we're pursuing here. Right. And yeah. so tell us a little bit, you know, what you know, what, what are, are folks gonna things? see? What are the cool yeah, things yeah, yeah. we're gonna see with this? Well, and it takes advantage of the architect's creativity. So each one of these proposals was quite different mm -hmm. one from the other, but it all included the minimum of fifty meter pool, right. a play pool for, for kids with a little warm up area as necessary, places where Kids can have their birthday parties and, you know, a fitness area, which is a, a good way to help generate revenue for the facility. Uh, meeting rooms for the community, uh, night parking, again, the continuation of the Esplanade. The few pieces left for the master plan are connecting that Esplanade over to the Mount Vernon Trail 
for cyclists and, and pedestrians. And the other one is finishing the fourth field. Those are things that will have to come in later phases, the fourth playing field on top of the current parking lot. Okay. And you know, there's also a, a five meter dive tower that'll have uh, increments below. Mm -hmm. um, at one point it was conceived that we could possibly uh, look at a 10, 10 meter, meter dive tower. We weren't able to do that, but five meters is still a substantial improvement over any existing aquatics uh, infrastructure we have. And what I love most about it, Jay, is the design really makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah. It's elegant in its simplicity. Uh, everything works and flows well. I think when people actually are in the facility, they'll find that it really makes sense to do um, you know, the 50 meter pool, but to easily access the leisure pool and all of the uh, changing rooms in between and, and the natural light just really makes a lot of sense. Great. Something to look forward to and yeah. something I'm sure we'll be talking about. Now, one thing about the aquatics is it is going to be LEED certified, correct? Uh, LEED right. silver, I that's believe. Right. Um, but that's not the only environmental sustainability thing that happened this month. Um, another is a very interesting concept called Sea Pace. Yeah. Tell me a little bit yeah, about this. Yeah, you know, this is the Commercial Property uh, Assessed Clean Energy Program, which is uh, just a really interesting concept that's novel for Virginia. It's not in the rest of the country, but we're the first locality in Virginia to enact an ordinance where we uh, partner with the private sector to help um, commercial buildings, and this is commercial buildings only, which includes offices and apartments, to make some clean energy and water efficiency, or make some energy efficiency and water efficiency retrofits for their existing buildings, find financing for it, which is very difficult to do, um, in the private sector without any clear nexus of what value is being created. So we partner to help that happen, providing a line of financing um, to get existing buildings to be more efficient, but also to provide substantial uh, financing for new buildings as well, as long as they exceed energy standards. So it's a great public-private partnership that actually costs Arlington taxpayers zero and it produces great value for the community. And you said this is the something that's used mm -hmm. elsewhere in the country, but yeah. we are the first right. to do this in Virginia. Yeah. yeah, I think 30 some states have it, but in Virginia we had to work years to get the authority from the General Assembly. A lot of localities are now watching Arlington as we implement this new tool to help facilitate um, the private sector to do these energy retrofits and actually help us meet our community-wide energy goals. Okay, well, okay. Yeah. So moving on to another kind of redevelopment type of project. The board did approve a special GLUP plan for that area along Washington Boulevard um, yeah. where I think where, yeah, where Rocklands is with the Legion, yeah, yeah. the YMCA. Yeah, um, exactly. We talked a little bit about this last month, but what was really the nexus behind this special plan? Yeah, um, we do so much good planning in Arlington and we've got plans and we revisit them. This particular area just north of the Virginia Square sector plan had not really been replanned. It needed attention, especially as several property owners were interested in redeveloping, the YMCA being one of them, the American Legion being another. So what we do traditionally is we step back from their, their proposal explicitly and we say what planning principles apply here? How do we re-look at this area with the community, with the professional staff, and determine what is the appropriate density and heights in this particular area? Uh, as defined. And then, which we did, we looked at it, uh, we made some decisions in the middle of the block, it may be six or seven stories as it tapers down to the neighborhood, three four to four. Three, yeah. um, so the next thing, and we came to an agreement on that, we adopted something, each of the property owners then will come in within that newly designated general land use plan proposal and put their projects forward and we'll be able to, board will look at those and refine those, uh, question those, and make sure that they fit within the broader vision that's been adopted. Okay, well, that a lot of things to look forward to, all of which I think we'll be seeing down the line, but we're gonna take a short break now before we take a closer look at some of the other important actions the board took at its November meeting. When we return, we'll discuss several housing decisions that were made by the board. Stay with us.
We're back now with County Board Wrap-Up, our monthly chat with the board members about some of the important decisions they took during their monthly board meeting. Today we're talking with County Board Chair Jay Fassett and Board Member Christian Dorsey. Gentlemen, thank you once again for being here. Now, it would not be a County Board meeting without some kind of affordable housing <laughs> um, element. That's a good way to put it out, yeah. You know. That's what makes um, us special. But one spe specific one that came up at this particular meeting was that of accessory dwellings. Let's talk a little bit of what are accessory dwellings, first of all, and what was the action the board took? Here? Well, you know, so most people, you know, consider would n know them by maybe their more common names, basement apartments, or in, in some cases, quarters, granny like flats, that. or mm -hmm. mother-in-law suites. And uh, up until 10 years ago, these were not legally possible in Arlington. Uh, but the board undertook an extensive process a decade ago and and figured out how to uh, legalize accessory dwellings. Uh, but as a way to sort of ease this into the community, it was fairly restrictive in terms of how one could go about making an eligible area suitable for what we call the accessory dwelling. And we only saw about 20 of them over 10 years. So uh, this board undertook the, the process yet again to engage the community to figure out how can we uh, make these a little bit more possible, a little easier, facilitate them. Remove some of the obstacles <laughs> yeah. that were in the way. That's yeah. right. And, uh, you know, so what we were able to do this, this past month uh, were to come up with ways of, uh, in, or at least making it easier for basements to be used for accessory dwellings, not requiring people to put up walls unnecessarily. Okay. They can utilize their whole basements for accessory dwellings, uh, hopefully creating the opportunity for people to create more. And then we also, uh, with existing buildings that may be uh, currently used as garages or sheds or uh, accessory buildings in their backyard, they can also take those existing buildings and uh, make them accessory dwellings. What we have yet to do is to figure out how we're going to look at new accessory buildings and, and determine where they fit within, within this whole process. Uh, we want the manager to give us some options on uh, whether they should be treated differently than current buildings as far as how far away they are from a neighboring okay. property. And what's really the, you know, what's really the reasoning behind why do we want to see more of these accessory dwellings? Well, you know, I would say, uh, first of all, it serves a few different reasons. Affordable housing is one. You know, we found through market studies that these cost less than typical housing in Arlington. So that's a great way to provide affordable housing with no subsidy from taxpayers. But also, this is about giving homeowners flexibility to use their properties for changing circumstances. I, I met a widower who's got her children who are be gonna be going off to school. And she's looking at much more house than she needs, but she'd love to be able to keep the family home for her children to return to. Being able to rent out her basement is gonna facilitate that happen. And give her the income she needs. And, and you know, that. the point is anyone can invite someone to rent a room, but then you share the kitchen, you have these common spaces. What this was 10 years ago, and now we're improving, is an opportunity to create really a separate little unit with a kitchen, bathroom, et cetera, of your own. And these are small, so they're 500 to 750 square feet. They are accessory to the main building, and they are a more affordable place for a lot of people to be able to live. And they allow those people, as Christian said, that are in these homes that are maybe on a fixed income to age in place and have another income. Oh, it's interesting to see how that plays out. Um, but continuing on the affordable housing vein, um, the board also allocated some funding for a project in Sherlington, correct? Oh, yes, uh, Park Sherlington. You know, Kara, we have fewer than 3,000 uh, what we call market-based affordable units left in our county. Uh, you know, we all know about the affordable housing crisis. About 10% of them are located in this Park Sherlington development. And it, it, it was on the market and potentially going to be purchased by someone who would knock them down. Knock them down. Yeah. And um, fortunately, there is a, a, an affordable housing developer that was interested in successfully uh, or was engaged in bidding for the property in order to be successful. They needed a partnership with the county. Uh, we put in a relatively low amount of the equity required for them to purchase the property so that we can come up with a plan over the coming years to, uh, to keep those existing buildings, which are in decent shape, um, and to preserve them as affordable and, and, and make that the case for the next several decades, at least. 
we have some great local affordable housing developers. This one is a new one. This is a more national group. Yeah. They have units all over the country and they've been wanting to work in Arlington. And the good news is we put in a six million in this yeah, case. Yeah. They are what's leveraging a lot more than yeah. that oh, okay. from their sources, which is really helpful to allow us to preserve these into the future, these units into the future. Well, very helpful for so many people. Yep, absolutely. Um, and so transitioning a bit to planning, mm -hmm. we're also taking a look at the future of the Career Center. Now, I toured the Career uh, Center a couple of years ago, um, and it's really an incredible facility. Um, so mm -hmm. what, are, what are some of the discussions taking place there? Yep, we've been working really close with the schools uh, and everyone remembers a year a couple of years ago we had the uh, community facility study which made it clear that one of our biggest challenges as we grow and expand students population that land is our biggest challenge yes. it is the asset we need to manage the best so we work closely with the schools as they try to meet their population growth they have made a commitment to add 800 high school seats over the next number of years, and they are looking to split those seats between the existing Ed Center, right next to Washington mm -hmm. Lee High School, and seats over at the Career Center site. So it's one of the larger sites sure. in the county. It's in a pretty strategic location at the crossroads of some really good transportation systems. And we have jointly pulled together with them a working group to look at sort of conceptually um, the a master plan for that site. How do we take that site, which is very valuable, and do more with it, including, and most importantly in the short term, these um, extra Adding high school attic. seats. Yeah. So okay. this will be a sort of a, a phased, probably what we'll develop is jointly looking at some phased development uh, processes and options. Uh, leading to um, maybe more beyond these 400 high school seats down the road. Interesting. So this will be a long-term project. This is not something the in the working short group term. will do its work in a relatively short period of time, within a year. Okay. But uh, there will be more steps after that. They'll be doing the larger, broader conceptual work. But each phase then has to you have to dig into, and each building that goes in, there is a county library on that site. We have to figure out how to integrate or replace the Columbia Pike Library, which now sits on that okay. property. So another thing that would, will be there would be a chance for the public to weigh in throughout this process about? The working group includes many citizens. Uh, it's, it's essentially all citizens representing some of the local neighbors, representing some of the, some of the larger uh, community advisory groups. Uh, and they will work through with, a, I think Kathleen is the chair. I, I believe we have yes, Kathleen identified McSweeney. Kathleen yeah. McSweeney as okay. the chair. And the schools and the county have both jointly appointed all these folks and they'll begin their work uh, in the month of December and then really get you know hard to work in January. All right, it'll be interesting to see what they come up with. Well, we're yep. going to take another quick break now and when we return we'll take a look in our final segment at the guidance the board gave the county manager for that proposed fiscal year 2019 budget and why we decided to rename the county government office building. We'll be back. Welcome back to County Board Wrap-Up. In our final segment today, we're going to be talking about the county budget as well as a new name for the county office building. Let's dive right in with its budget season. Um, I feel like it's always budget it's season always in budget season. some form or another. But how would you really characterize the board's guidance to the manager this year with regards to the budget? Well, you know, our guidance was really informed by, by things that we know and things that we don't know, but we are concerned about. And what we know is that there is a gap on uh, the county government side between revenues and expenditures. Uh, it's a modest gap, but it's a gap nonetheless. So um, we, we, we know that we have that issue. We expect that the Arlington Public Schools is going to have a budget gap as well. But what we've directed the manager to do is to deliver a budget to us that balances fully without raising the property tax rate. We recognize that 
um, in, an, in, in an area where our citizens face rising assessments every year, even if we do nothing to the tax rate, their tax bill increases. And uh, you know, there's certainly a degree of, of, of in insecurity that that places on our residents. So we want to make sure we can deliver government in a way that's affordable to them, but also that's high quality. So the manager has some tough work to do to figure out how to deliver that program um, with those constraints. And you know, let me just be very clear, we've got some clear uh, you know, issues. It's, it's APS, we have challenges with Metro and transportation. There is the federal conversation of tax reform and how that will impact funding to the state, also the security of our residents. So those unknowns really put us in a fairly uncomfortable position. Uh, and at the same time, we recognize that the cost of, of delivering core government goes up every year. Um, inflationary costs, we can't do anything about. So uh, we have to figure out how to do all of that this year. It's gonna require some really deft work by the manager, but rest assured, it's gonna mean changing some priorities. It may mean making some cuts. Uh, it will mean, mean making some cuts. Uh, the question is how we do that in a way that's, uh, that's best and balanced. So I don't wanna put a, a positive spin on it. It's a really, it's right really here. challenging mm -hmm. year. Now, but I know the, we've already started talking with the community about this kind of thing. Um, folks had a, seri you had a series of kind of focus group discussions yeah. to talk about pri budget priorities. Mm -hmm. Those kind of went through the fall, I believe. How, right. how, what were some of the outcomes? That was that? led by the manager. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the manager and to some degree the superintendent, mm -hmm. you know, got the pulse of the community, um, helped, for, helped them understand as the manager is trying to explain to us as well what his framing of the, the out outlook for next year would be. And I think it's important to, to say that the tradition here, and it's this year as well, is conservative and a conservative approach to this. The projections of revenue are, it's a long way out before you know what they're yet gonna be, but you have to make projections to build a budget. We have traditionally made very conservative projections so that I don't remember a time in 20 years where we got to the spring and we had less revenue than we anticipated. That's a good thing. You're, you're conservative, then in January, you get the real property right. tax numbers. Then as you move through the next months, you get a little bit better information on each. But traditionally, you'll get a little bit more revenue as you go to the spring. We have uncertainties at the federal level that hard to, hard mm -hmm. to know how that will play out. But the, the, the process now is to, the manager got guidance from this board about how to frame and what the, the sort of the, the um, cap on that budget was. And it's keeping the tax rate steady. Um, there was an assumption in there about Metro that any of Metro's additional needs that you read about in the paper will be dealt with elsewhere. Okay. We do not have the capacity to deal with those. So that's an assumption built in. There's an assumption built in that our affordable housing investment fund will remain level. There's an assumption that the schools will make do with the additional revenue coming from those projections of around at least 16 million yeah, or so. Yeah. Um, so those are some of the big assumptions, but even with all those, yeah. as Christian said, it's gonna call for some efficiencies and some reductions. Mm -hmm. at, at least at this point, that is the way it looks. Right. So the manager will bring forth his proposed budget to you when? In February. 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 Yeah. Okay. And then there will, of course, be plenty of time for public so comments, et cetera. plenty of public engagement. And even right now, Kara, uh, you referenced the, the budget roundtables mm -hmm. that were conducted in the fall. There is a report um, on the, the output of those conversations that's available online, I believe, if you type budget into the county website, which gives a sense of, of what the community has prioritized up until now. And then throughout the, uh, the spring uh, budget season, um, there will be myriad opportunities for the public to engage, uh, culminating in, in hearings, public hearings that the board will conduct on both the budget and the tax rate before we go ahead and adopt it. So this is certainly the, the early part of, of what is, as you have mentioned, is an <laughs> ongoing <laughs> continuing conversation. But you know, one of the great things I think about the way we do it in Arlington is we really are transparent and upfront with our community from the earliest possible mm -hmm. stages because mm -hmm. one of the worst things is to get to the spring when we're making these decisions and for people to have been in the dark. Right, right. So we'd be out in the open and everybody's gonna be clear on what's going on. That's right. 
So, but and to just kind of wrap things up today, we had a bit of a celebration at the um, board meeting as well at, with a new name for the county yeah. office building. Yeah, I, I got to tell you, I was so thrilled um, we to be able to do this before I left, and we had a oh a, a good number, dozens of residents that approached the board back in the summer with the idea of, of naming. Uh, it's not really renaming, because it never it's had a name. Had <laughs> it's naming the, the county government office building. Uh, and, and naming it, it for After Ellen, Ellen Bosman, who is the longest serving member of the county board in, in its history, 24 years. She was the chairman six times. Uh, in fact, when I ran for office myself, it was her seat that I ran for. So she left in 1997, 73 to 97. and. Her name is well known in local government circles, in regional circles, in Arlington. Um, she has had a lot to do with many of the wonderful assets and, and the, what this community has become. She was a civil person who believed that government had a positive role to play in people's lives. She was thoughtful. She was determined. Uh, she engaged the community. I, I think she created that Arlington mm -hmm. Way concept. Um, and the opportunity to sort of carry that name forward and put it in a prominent place so that people will never forget sort of from where we came and one of those great families that had so much to do with creating today's Arlington and a lot of our success, the, found, you know, the fundamentals that, that we keep building on was really, I think, exciting yeah. for all of us. We had a great crowd. Yeah. We had a lot of wonderful testimony. the old guard, the new guard, um, and it was a wonderful moment, I think, uh, in the boardroom. That's really nice. And when do we expect to So we it? will hopefully have by the spring, and it would be very fitting if, uh, you know, by the third week in April, which was uh, Ellen's birthday, if we could maybe okay. have this all done. Uh, that would be a fitting time to do it. Okay. We get sort of the... Uh, reawakening from the doldrums of winter, we can name our county office building, and we right. can have yet another celebration of, of Ellen. And, you know, Kara, I don't know if you've sort of picked up on what Jay was alluding to, but between Jay and Ellen, uh, the seat that he occupies is, has been held by two people over the last yes. 44 years. I mean, mm -hmm. this is a really big deal when you think about the evolution and continuity of, of Arlington. It's tremendous. And I, I'm just glad her husband, who you know, we should, we should mention recently passed away, got a chance to, to see our uh, naming the county office building in her honor. He was not able to join us. He had hoped to be able. His, mm -hmm. the, the family was here, okay. but he was not able to, and he died a, a, week, a week later. Yeah. Oh. So, but he was aware of the action that the board took, and that's even that much nicer. This will be a very fitting tribute then. Yep. Very Absolutely. nice. All right. Well, that brings us to the end of another county board wrap up. Thank you, Jay and Christian, for walking us through some of the board's decisions. Now, if you want to watch the county board meetings, they're live streamed and archived on the county's website, arlingtonva.us. Just search county board. And remember to tell us what you think about these issues and more by going to topics.arlingtonva.us slash engage. We'll be back again next month for the final show of 2017. Enjoy the holiday season in the meantime, and we'll see you then. My husband and I moved to Arlington when we got married. Uh, we were both living in the district. Uh, housing was still very tight after World War II. And uh, all the people we knew were young couples were living in Arlington. In the 50s, Arlington for the first time had the downtown stores, department stores moving out to Arlington. Clarendon was, um, was a good part of the shopping. It had pennies, it had a movie theater, uh, it had Sears. By doing the planning as Metro was being constructed, I think we put ourselves in a much better position than other counties around. All of this transformation wouldn't have taken place without 
good leaders on the county board. But you can't lead unless you've got followers. So I think it took both. And, um, you know, in a sense, I think we ought to be very grateful that we've had this. Mm -hmm.